No matter whether you play your games with cleats on the ground, rubber on the road, or flying high in the sky, there's one thing that all PlayStation Vita and PlayStation TV owners crave. More speed. I'm going to show you how to overclock your Vita or PlayStation TV in just a matter of minutes using only one single download. Grab your Vita or PlayStation TV and fire up your PC because you're about to learn something new. There are two prerequisites here. The first one is you'll need to have a jailbroken Vita or PlayStation TV for this process to work. The other is you'll need to be able to connect that device to your computer either by USB or FTP or remove the storage card and put it into a storage card reader on your computer. If you haven't installed it already, the only thing you need to download and install is Auto Plugin 2. It's hosted on the GitHub and linked for you in the video description. Scroll down on the GitHub page until you get to the Asset section. You'll see a listing here for Auto Plugin 2.vpk. Click to download it to your computer. From the desktop on your computer, open up File Explorer and open up the Downloads folder. You'll find the VPK file inside Downloads. From here, I'm going to take this File Explorer window and just drag it and snap it into place on the left side of the screen for now. You'll need to open the Vita Shell application from the live area of your device. If you previously installed it in the live area, you can either tap on the bubble or select it with X to launch it. If you haven't, it's conveniently located for you inside the Vita Deploy package. From here, I'm going to select Vita Deploy with the X button and then select Start with the X button to launch Vita Deploy. The very first listing inside Vita Deploy is for the file manager. If you select it with the X button, this will automatically open up for you Vita Shell. Pretty cool, huh? From Vita Shell, press the select button on your device. From here, you can either connect by USB or FTP to your computer or remove the memory card and put it in your computer's card reader. Once the computer recognizes the storage area, it'll pop up a file explorer window. From here, I'm going to take this File Explorer window and drag and drop it and snap it into place on the right side of the screen. All you have to do now is grab the VPK file out of your Downloads folder and drag and drop it onto your storage location. However, I recommend not dropping it into one of the subfolders. It's easiest just to drop it outside of these subfolders directly onto the root of the storage card. That's everything you need to do with your PC. You can transition over to your Vita or PlayStation TV for the remainder of the guide. Back on your PlayStation Vita or PlayStation TV, press the circle button to disconnect your device from your computer. You'll need to install that VPK file for Auto Plugin 2 that you copied over to your storage. To access it, scroll down through the list of choices with the green highlight until you get to UX0 and select it with the X button. Use the D-pad to dive bomb down past the list of folders and files and then up a couple of listings and you'll see the listing for Auto Plugin 2.vpk. Press the X button three times, once to select the file, once to confirm the install, and once to give the VPK file permission to install. The process takes about a minute or so in real time to complete. Once it's done, you no longer need the VPK file. Press the triangle button to pull out the side cart menu, then press the D-pad down three times to move the green highlight down to delete and select it with X. Then at the confirmation pop-up that appears, press X for yes to delete the VPK file. You're done with Vita Shell for the moment. Press the PlayStation button on your device, then swipe from the right corner down or press and hold the circle button to close out Vita Shell and go back to the live area. To launch Auto Plugin for the first time, from the live area, navigate down to the bubble for Auto Plugin 2 and tap on it or select it with the X button. Then tap on Start or select it with X to launch Auto Plugin 2. The first time you launch Auto Plugin 2, you'll see the splash screen appear twice while the software downloads and updates the most recent list of plugins. Okay, this is really important, so pay careful attention here. If you have the old version of PSV Shell by Electri installed on your system, you'll need to delete it and the profiles before you proceed. From the main menu of Auto Plugin 2, the highlight should already be on Vita Plugins. Select it with the X button. Inside the Vita Plugins menu, the first listing is for install plugins and the listing underneath it is for uninstall plugins. Use the D-pad to move the highlight down to uninstall plugins and select it with X. Take a look at the list of plugins you see here installed on your system. If you see a listing in the UR0 storage location under the TIE folder that says psvshell.skprx, that's the plugin for the original version of PSV Shell. If you see it here, use the D-pad to move the highlight down to it and press the X button for delete. Then at the confirmation prompt that appears, 
select yes with the X button to delete this plugin from your system. Once you've confirmed that you've deleted the old version of PSV shell, press the circle button to go back one level in the navigation, then press the circle button again to go back to the main menu of Auto Plugin 2. For the deleted plugin change to take effect, you'll need to restart your Vita or PlayStation TV. To do this, scroll down to Exit and select Exit with the X button. Then at the confirmation screen that appears, press X for OK to restart your system. You'll now need to go into Vita Shell to delete those profiles. To do this, go into either Vita Shell or Vita Deploy, tap on it or select it with X, then tap on Start or select it with X. In this case, since I'm going through Vita Deploy, I'll select File Manager from the list of choices with the X button. Once Vita Shell launches, you'll probably be back in the UX0 partition where you last left off. Press the circle button to go back one level in the navigation structure to the list of storage locations. From here, use the D-pad to scroll the green highlight up from UX0 to UR0 and select UR0 with the X button. Next up, from the list of subfolders you see on screen, use the D-pad to scroll the green highlight down to Data and select Data with the X button. Inside the Data subfolder, you'll see a subfolder here called PSV Shell. Use the D-pad to move the green highlight down to PSV Shell and select it with X. Inside this subfolder is where the Profile subfolder lives. Scroll down to it using the D-pad and with the green highlight on Profile, select it with X. If you see anything inside this subfolder, press the triangle button, highlight it, and delete any profiles you see here. Great, now all of the old remnants of PSV Shell have been deleted. Press the PlayStation button, then swipe from the right corner down or press and hold the circle button to go back to the live area. Next up, navigate back to Auto Plugin 2 in the live area, tap on the bubble or select it with X, then tap on Start or select it with X to launch Auto Plugin 2 again. Once the main menu of Auto Plugin 2 reappears, select Vita Plugins from the list of choices with the X button. From inside Vita Plugins, select Install Plugins with the X button. You'll see the list of available plugins that you can install on your system. From here, use the D pad to scroll down until you see the listing called PSV Shell Plus. What's great about Auto Plugin 2 is it takes care of the heavy lifting for you. Press the X button on PSV Shell Plus and you'll see a page loadup that gives you some instructions for installing the plugin. The instructions include steps for removing the old version of PSV Shell and any profiles that you have saved on your system. We've already taken care of this previously in the guide, so you can press X to proceed forward. To install the plugin to your system, press the X button and you'll receive a confirmation message that the plugin is now installed. Just like when you uninstall a plugin, when you install a plugin, you have to restart your Vita. Press the circle button to go back one level in the navigation structure, then press it again to go back to the main menu of Auto Plugin 2. From here, scroll down through the list of choices to exit and select Exit with the X button. At the confirmation screen that appears, press X to restart your system. When your system comes back up to the live area, you'll now have access to PSV Shell Plus. To access it, press the PlayStation button on your device. Initially, you won't see anything different here. It all looks the same until you continue to scroll down. Where the contents of PSV Shell lived in the live area, the contents of PSV Shell Plus live right here. The first three settings involve changing the CPU and GPU clock speed. The first setting, you can change the CPU clock speed by checking the box on the right side of the screen. Then you can make adjustments to the speed by either increasing it with the plus button or decreasing it with the minus button. A couple of notes here. If you increase the speed of the CPU, you'll get better performance. But with the Vita, you'll also get reduced battery life. And with either device, you run the possibility of increased heat from the chips going through the system. The same applies to the GPU. If you click the checkbox, you can change this setting all the way up to 222 megahertz or all the way down to 42 megahertz if you'd like. The faster you move the GPU, the better performance you'll get, but again, battery life on the Vita will take a hit and more heat will come out of the system. Additionally, there's a third checkbox here that's next to the listing for XBAR. That stands for Cross Media Bar and it applies to using adrenaline emulation of PSP games on the Vita. The point of overclocking the Cross Media Bar is that the more content you add to the Cross Media Bar for PSP emulation, the slower the Cross Media Bar can get. 
So turning up the speed of the cross media bar can drastically improve performance as you sift through the menus. Scroll down a bit more, you'll see additional options. First, you can choose to turn on the head up display if you wish. You can set it to frames per second only. You can set it to mini mode. You can set it to full mode, and you can even choose a developer mode. From here, I'm gonna select the mini mode as it's a good balance between frames per second and other key information. Below this, you can choose where the head up display appears on screen. U-L means it will be in the upper left corner. You can also set it to upper right corner, lower left corner, and lower right corner. I like having it in the upper left corner, so I'll change this setting back to its default. There's one more setting here and it's called CAS. It has to do with setting what are called memory tracking targets. Your best bet here is to leave this on the auto setting. However, as long as you know what you're doing, you can change this setting as high as seven in order to customize your overclocking experience. All right, so I did some testing with PSV Shell Plus and here's what I found. Some Vita games are frame locked to a maximum of 30 frames per second. That means no matter how much overclocking you do, the maximum frames per second rate they can achieve is 30 frames per second. That doesn't necessarily mean that you can't boost up the number of frames per second you're getting up to that ceiling though. Take a look at the head-up display and the frame counter in the top left corner. Although it tries to maintain a constant 30 frames per second without the overclocking, it actually has dips as low as 24 frames per second. Turn on the overclocking though and things get locked in at a nice buttery 30 frames per second. Even though this game's capped out at 30 frames per second, it's nice to know that you can get the performance benefits of overclocking to maintain that nice, buttery smooth 30 frames per second racing. If that doesn't fulfill your need for speed, this one just might. Air Race Speed is a highly underrated racing game. Not only is it optimized for 60 frames per second racing, but it does an excellent job of maintaining its 60 frame per second frame rate. Overclocking this game might give you some very minor performance benefits, but for the most part, this game is already well enough optimized that overclocking it is going to give you no significant benefit. I included this game specifically to show that not every Vita game necessarily has to be overclocked to enjoy its full potential. But if you want to see a game that desperately needs overclocking, FIFA 14 is among them. This game is supposed to run at a locked 60 frames per second, However, if you look at the frame counter in the top left corner, you'll see that during gameplay, it can lose nearly 25% of its frames. And during scoring celebrations, it can drop as low as a paltry 22 frames per second. This will not do. Bring in overclocking, however, and in-game play is now brought up to the 60 frames a second it's meant to be. That's quite a change from losing 25% of its frame rate during gameplay. And while scoring celebrations don't quite hit the 60 frame per second mark, they are vastly superior to the 22 frames a second they would drop down to previously. Now that you've got your device overclocked, let's put its additional power to use in a special way. Learn how to play your favorite retro games on your Vita or PlayStation TV with this video shown on screen and linked in the description and pinned comment. I'll see you over there.